Undertale's genocide route is already famously difficult with its bosses. So what happens when you remove your sense of touch by putting on oven mitts? Welcome back to another episode of Challenge Mode, the show where I beat games in incredibly strange and challenging ways for you all to enjoy my misery. I've been streaming for over two years now, and over that time I've done some incredibly crazy challenges on stream, a lot of which are things nobody would ever even consider. In today's episode, we'll be going through the genocide road of Undertale while wearing oven mitts, making it near impossible to feel the buttons or avoid pressing multiple buttons at once by accident. This challenge was done on and off over the course of just over 7 months. It originally started for the heck of it, but then became streams done for charity, originally for Larch to help people with developmental disabilities, and then later for the Stollery Children's Hospital, which is when the challenge was finally completed. Spoiler alert for the story of Undertale. Roll the intro. Undertale was originally released on September 15th, 2015. It quickly gained a following with many considering it to be revolutionary to turn-based RPGs with its unique system where one can choose peaceful options to end fights by acting. This game is built around choice, whether to end fights by fighting or acting, which characters to spare or not, and what actions you as the player want to take. I've taken several courses analyzing video games throughout university, and one of the more interesting ones proposed the idea that typical RPGs where you defeat enemies, obtain gold, and earn experience to level up and become stronger is, at its root, colonialism. Now, I doubt RPGs of this nature are actually trying to express colonialism through their gameplay per se, but it can be hard to deny that the whole idea of, I overpower you, I take from you, I become stronger, is at base, colonialism. So it becomes very interesting when you have a game such as Undertale come along and make the argument that you don't need to kill or defeat your enemies, you don't need to take from them, you don't need to use them as a means to become stronger, by instead creating an environment that progresses around the player's choice, rather than one that progresses around the developer's choice of what the player must do in battle. This game takes place in a world where monsters were long ago sealed underground, and you as the player find yourself in the underground after trekking through the mountains and needing to find your way home. Along the way, you will make plenty of allies and enemies, and it is through your choices as the player whether to treat your adversaries as friends or foes. There exist three main routes in Undertale. Neutral slash pacifist is the route where the player kills either none or some of the monsters throughout their adventure. True pacifist route can only be done if the player has already completed a neutral slash pacifist route, and is where the player not only spares everyone they encounter, but also does all the side quests to befriend all the main characters along the way. And finally, the genocide route is where the player kills everyone they encounter, even going so far as to staying in each area until the random encounters stop entirely because there are no more monsters left to kill. Most bosses from the other routes are killed in one shot in this route, but this route features two unique bosses that are well known for their difficulty, with the final boss of this route likely being the hardest boss in Undertale. If you want to take the route where you kill everything, the game won't stop you, but it sure will make things hella hard for you at these two boss roadblocks. By killing everything, the heroes of the story become those who stand against you to save the underground. By the player embracing the typical RPG path of colonialism to the fullest extent, exploiting the people of this world to the fullest extent, taking from them, and becoming as powerful and high level as possible to get in the game, Undertale makes arguments by then portraying the player as the villain, and the bosses as the heroes seeking to save their world. It shows a potential other side for the other characters in the worlds of RPGs, by showing the impacts of the player, and bringing up the importance for one to consider the consequences of their actions. If a genocide route is completed, every subsequent playthrough is doomed to be a bad ending by the hands of this evil side of the player, making the argument that such an act of evil is irredeemable, irreversible. Undertale has to be one of the most fascinating games through the arguments it makes. Maybe something to consider a standalone video on one day. But now, let's get into the challenge. 
During this adventure, I set my name to Atari, considering it's rather fitting for a company that has literally evolved into a scam company over the past decade to be attempting to bring ruin to the world by making themselves as powerful as possible. Undertale Genocide Route with Oven Mitts. Now, what kind of psychopath would consider this challenge? Apparently, I'm the only one according to Google. I wasn't kidding in the intro to each of these episodes when I say some of the challenges I do are things nobody else would ever even consider. I originally wanted to play Undertale with a Guitar Hero controller, and I was able to connect it to my computer and successfully use it for Undertale, but I wasn't able to change the keybinds. My movement was set to a control stick at the bottom of the controller, rather than the buttons at the top like I wanted, and I couldn't figure out how to change it. That means that despite using a Guitar Hero controller, my movement would still be a control stick. So it would be a challenge that looks hard, but really isn't when you realize I'm just using a control stick. So I scrapped the idea. I have no intention of deceiving my viewers by doing something that looks like some great challenge when it's really something relatively easy. I needed a new idea for a genocide route challenge, something genuinely challenging, something that nobody has done before. Oven mitts was the answer, which wound up being way harder than I anticipated when I first started. I was using oven mitts on both hands through most of the challenge, but later on I switched to only using it on the right hand, as I figured the arrow keys were the only part of the oven mitts challenge that really mattered anyway. At first, using oven mitts makes it feel impossible to feel the buttons at all. Towards the end, it became possible to only just slightly feel the buttons through the mitt, and I mean slightly. What this means is it becomes near impossible to know what buttons you're pressing, and avoid accidentally hitting multiple buttons at once. You'll try to dodge an attack, only to go the complete wrong way, or stay in place because you've pressed multiple buttons at once. This really chalks up dodging attacks to a whole lot of luck. Throughout the challenge, I needed to familiarize myself with the positions of my arrow keys through the mitt as best I could to ensure the best odds of hitting what button I intended instead of the wrong button, or more commonly, hitting multiple buttons at once. What the challenge really is, is getting familiar with the buttons through the mitt to reduce how much of the run is based on luck as much as possible. Playing Undertale with oven mitts will always have an aspect of luck to it. It's always possible to hit the completely wrong thing since you can't feel what you're hitting through the mitt, it's just a matter of getting as familiar with it as possible to have the least odds of getting completely screwed over by a misinput, and it's because of that that I started practicing Undertale of Amits off-camera on my own time as well during this challenge. I wound up including my inputs on stream during this challenge, so anybody watching could tell when I'm accidentally hitting the wrong or multiple buttons at once. Another smaller aspect of the challenge is definitely hand sweating. You can't tell by watching someone else do the challenge, but a bit into each session, those mitts would start heating up inside so fast. Sometimes I'd have to take brief breaks just to take off the mitts. All in all, this turned out to be the hardest challenge run I had tried up to this point. Smash Bros Brawl Subspace Emissary on intense difficulty with a Wiimote rifle as a controller, and New Super Luigi with only one hand and one Joy-Con hold nothing compared to Undertale's genocide route with oven mitts. This is usually the section of the episode where I talk about the major roadblocks along the way of the challenge, but for this challenge, there was just two of them, being the two Genocide Route exclusive bosses, and we already talked about the final boss in the last section of the video anyway, so let's use this section for Undyne the Undying. After one-shotting her, Undyne refuses to die, and comes back more powerful than ever. If you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Her attacks are largely of the same variety as in the neutral route, except ramped up to a thousand. For most of the fight, the attacks are predetermined. Same attacks every time so you know what to anticipate in what order. Then after so many turns pass, it just begins to cycle through her crazier attacks at the end. Using healing items would sometimes become a gamble with Ovamits, because a turn you use to heal is a turn not damaging her, and she can attack you immediately after anyway, and the mitts means you can just receive more damage than you just healed, which is about the worst feeling ever. 
This means that ideally, you would be using the healing items as little as possible throughout the run, and want to take as little damage as you can early on. If you use a healing item early on, you've advanced the fight one turn closer to the crazier attacks you actually need the healing items for, without progressing the fight any closer to actually beating her. So for every healing item you spend, it's just added one more crazy end of the battle attack you'll need to endure through before winning, making healing feel more like a necessary evil when used, rather than something all around helpful. It's after learning this system that I decide if I took any damage in the first two attacks at all, I would reset the fight on the spot. Losing any health against the first two attacks made it feel like it was just holding me back in the long run, and wasn't worth continuing the run in. It's only if I take no damage after these first two attacks that I continue the run. If I took damage later than these two attacks, I wouldn't be happy about it, but I'd usually press on regardless. Sometimes I'd even resort to resetting if I took any damage during the first three attacks instead of two, because of how vital it was to heal as little as possible. I could afford to spend one healing item before second phase starts. Any more than that, and I have lost the run because hitting the wrong buttons through the mitts on second phase is just excruciating. Second phase starts after the reverse arrows are introduced, so ideally I would only have to use my first heal after this attack. At least I call it second phase, I don't know if this fight has an official second phase. In the final stretch of the battle, I just cross my fingers that I get some of the easier attacks to dodge thrown at me. The worst attacks were the ones that involved pressing in multiple directions at once for diagonal movement. Moving the shield to block arrows usually wasn't too much trouble. Moving left and right to dodge spears, easy peasy. But the moment you've got free movement and the spears start raining down, things get hella spicy. Or even spicier is when the spears rotate in around you, as you need to factor in diagonal movement at points. Not being able to feel the buttons as you try to maneuver around this mess feels like the most RNG heavy part of this fight. Well, you know what I mean. Real life RNG for if you're actually pressing the correct buttons through the mid. Let's also not forget to mention, turns out this battle was actually way tougher for me than it needed to be even when ignoring the oven mitts because I didn't even have on the best weapon. So after a total of nearly 5 hours, and that's just what was on camera, of bashing my head against this boss on and off over the course of a couple months, as it turns out, the battle could have just been much shorter than it was for me because I wasn't doing as much damage as I could had I had the optimal weapon for this fight, which I only found out just after finally clearing the boss. I came so close, numerous times. As it went on, I began to become more familiar with the button positions underneath the mitt. Never perfect, but usually good enough to handle at least the arrows and stand a semi-decent chance against the spears. I began to memorize the whole fight, knew what to expect, and knew when I had to heal because of what's coming next, or when to skip healing because either the next attack is hella easy and I don't get damaged, or if I do get damaged, it's not even worth continuing the run in any way. But with enough determination and pure button pressing luck, Undyne the Undying was finally defeated. From here, I began the final trek towards the final roadblock standing between me and an insanely difficult challenge finally conquered. If you'd like to try this challenge yourself, you'll need the PC version of Undertale along with a pair of oven mitts. I say the PC version so that you can use a keyboard rather than a controller. If using a controller, then you still control your direction with an analog stick, so even through the oven mitt you can still mostly tell what you're doing. So despite my other two routes of Undertale being done on the Switch version, the Genocide route hopped onto the PC version specifically for the use of the keyboard, because through the mitts you'll either not feel the keys at all, or barely feel the keys, making it easy to hit the wrong keys, hit multiple keys, or miss the keys altogether. What kind of oven mitts you use can also play a large part in your overall performance. If you use a pair with grips like these, then you lose your already small ability to feel the keys through the mitts, and change the challenge from mostly luck to all luck. 
so it's best not to use mitts too thick like those, but also ones that aren't too thin that take away a lot of the challenge. I don't know what thin open mitts would be, these are just my winter gloves. It's good to have that sweet spot where you're using thick mitts that make things very challenging, but not downright impossible. Throughout the challenge, it was suggested to me that instead of using the arrow keys, that I set keybinds to up, down, left, right of entire sections of the keyboard. It was an interesting idea, but not one I picked up. Your biggest enemy throughout this challenge is hitting the wrong buttons. This is why before several attacks, I'd often realign myself and hit up, down, left, and right a couple times to make sure my fingers were in the correct position. I would know this by looking at my second monitor which had open no board, software that allows me to visualize my inputs, and is also what is responsible for the keys you see on screen by my camera. While in the safety of the menus in between attacks, I would press up, down, left, and right a few times, while looking over at my other screen to make sure I'm hitting what I need to, otherwise I'd adjust my fingers within the mitt accordingly. Inside the mitt, I'd position my fingers the way I normally would if using a game with arrow keys, index finger and ring finger on the right, and middle finger for up and down. So while my index finger and ring finger could stay mostly stationary, my middle finger would need to navigate between up and down, resulting in my sometimes pressing them both at the same time and therefore not moving at all. As the months of doing this challenge here and there went by, I would practice on my own time off camera to continue getting more and more familiar with the positions of the keys on the other side of the mitt. This challenge takes a lot of patience, a lot of luck, and most importantly, a lot of determination and the will to never give up. With all of these combined, even a challenge as jarring as Undertale Genocide with other mitts becomes surpassable. <gasps> yes! Finally! Finally! It only took like, I've been streaming this for like, an hour and a half now, and last time I spent like three hours with it total, so it took me like four and a half hours to beat Undone with Oven Mitt, but I finally did it. Oh man, now you can do like 1600 damage with the battle issues on Undone, I guess that's a freaking <laughs> item that I could have picked up earlier. Oops. <laughs> Oops. That probably would have been easier for the Oven Mitt's challenge. Oh my goodness. How many attempts were we at? I need to scroll up on the chat box there. 79. I got before 80. With Undyne defeated, Atari made their way through the rest of the underground, leveling up and becoming stronger by destroying the lives of all the underground's residents by trying to sell them garbage roller coaster tycoon games. At least that's how I see Atari doing it in my head. After reaching level 19, Atari enters the castle, having now destroyed almost every monster in the underground, and has met with their final foe. It's a beautiful day outside. Birds are singing. Flowers are blooming. On days like these, kids like you should be burning hell. Between you and completing the Undertale Genocide Route of Emit's challenge stands your final foe, Zans. Unlike every other foe, Zans dodges your attacks and does not give you invincibility frames after being hit. So while he may only do one damage, that's a constant one damage as long as you are in any of his hitboxes, allowing him to shred through your health if you don't act fast. The smallest, briefest moment of not pressing exactly what you need to through the oven mitt can be absolutely devastating to your health. Even though none of your attacks land, you actually still need to keep attacking him in order to progress the fight so that he continues talking. So just like Undyne, every time you heal means another attack you'll need to endure as a consequence. This fight has two phases, and before starting the second phase, you actually get a break to heal as much as you need without any consequence of how many turns you need to endure. Unlike memorizing all of the first half of attacks with Undyne, and having first phase be easy-ish to take little to no damage in with each standard attack, Zanz's attacks with Ovamit are the kind that you will find yourself just barely getting clipped by frequently, slowly but surely chipping your health away even when you're playing great. Second phase depends on fast reaction times and precision movements, the latter of which is very difficult to have with Ovamit's on. One of the most difficult attacks during this challenge, I find, are the ones where he throws you against the wall. If you don't react perfectly 
and hit what buttons you intend through the mitt, it's an attack that always takes off a significant chunk of HP. While this fight is certainly a difficult challenge normally, with other mitts on, it feels near impossible at times, and it required a level of precision and a near perfect understanding of where the buttons would be on the other side of the mitt, which I gained through practice both on camera and off over the course of several months. After so much experience with this fight, I was eventually able to play the basic attacks almost as well as if I wasn't using an oven mitt at all. My greatest challenge were the attacks that needed the most precise movement and reactions not befitting of oven mitts, such as being thrown against the wall. I would need to adopt new strategies for several attacks, such as the two lanes attack amounting to me just going back and forth instead of doing a circle motion like I would during normal gameplay. The hardest attack, I would argue, is the final spin cycle right at the end because it forces you to do the hardest motion with oven mitts, circular motion. My strategy throughout Undyne and Zans had been to avoid circular motions whenever possible, as that is where it was the easiest to accidentally press multiple buttons at once, or the wrong buttons completely. I avoided diagonal movement during this attack as much as possible, using almost completely up, down, left and right on their own, making it possible to handle this attack with oven mitts, but not exactly ensuring the greatest odds of success. Despite my familiarity with handling the buttons through the oven mitt by this point, I would still sometimes find myself pressing multiple buttons together to lose at the worst of times. Overcoming this battle with oven mitts on may well be the most insane gaming challenge I have ever done to date, and that's saying something. So much of it was up to luck of hoping I don't hit multiple buttons at once, when I can't tell for certain what I'm pressing through the mitt. This challenge took a lot of patience, sweat, stress, mental pain, and physical pain to my hand, but most importantly, determination and the will to not give up. Fighting Zans with oven mitts began at the end of May 2019, and was finally achieved at the beginning of November 2019, right at the end of the Undertale time slot of my 24-hour charity stream for the Stollery Children's Hospital, with only 13 minutes left in the time slot before I switched games. With Zans finally defeated, not only was the Underground finally conquered and Ruin brought to the world, but I have now completed one of the most insane gaming challenges I have ever undertaken. Yes! I'm so hyped right now! Yes! Oh, be gone, I'm admit! Oh, 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 oh. Oh, my stomach hurts so badly. Oh. 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 I just gave myself a wicked stomach cramp from that. Oh. God, you're the last part where the oven mid two or it doesn't count. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. I'll go get it again. Oh, I just got a massive knot in my stomach, but I don't care. Ow, that's really painful. Ow, what did I just do to myself? Oh. It's like right in my abs here. It's like knotted up. Or something. Oh man, maybe I'll turn that camera down a little bit. Oh, I did it. Oh. <laughs> oh man. I'm gonna sort up my jacket here. Watch the game not save properly. Oh. Finally. This has taken like half a year of attempts, like every month or two. Like I'd stream this about every month or two for about the past half a year. Oh man, it's over. It's finally over. I'm not sure exactly what I was expecting from Undertale Genocide of Amits, but it certainly wasn't that. I wanted something that would challenge me, and really push my skill to the limit. Well, I got that, but I also got an insane mess of just hoping I pressed the correct buttons through the mitt, resulting in something that felt more luck than skill based at points, but maybe it's better that way. Through this seemingly impossible challenge, it forced me to draw out an important feeling pivotal to the story of Undertale, determination. Life isn't always easy but the things most worth doing in life are typically never the easy things. Challenges will always stand in your way, whether it be a stressful class, trying to secure a job, 
or even trying to beat Undertale with other mitts, and sometimes things may feel downright impossible. Whether you fail once, ten times, or even over a hundred times in my case, what's important is to stay determined, because as long as you pick yourself up again and are prepared to learn from your mistakes, then you've never truly failed. The moment you have failed is when you're knocked down and decide not to pick yourself up again. But as long as you get up and try again, and use each failure as an opportunity for growth, then you've never truly failed in your journey. Stay true to yourself and pursue what it is you want to achieve. If you never give up, know your limits and abilities and how to properly push yourself even further, then even the impossible suddenly becomes possible. Maybe it's not the destination you envisioned, but as long as you stay determined and found your way there, you'll have grown from your hardships and you can be proud of the journey and what you've achieved. Thanks for watching the video. Alright, that's it. It's time for my special attack. Are you ready? I keep hitting the Windows key with this thing! Greetings. I am Atari! <laughs> I forgot I named my character Atari because I hate Atari. Yeah, apparently my page is still... is still down. Maybe we just have to wait a little bit and then it can be... used again? So I'm literally running a 24-hour charity stream where people can't donate.